This is the College of Complexes, and you are all welcome. As good students, you should know that uh, Steve Cungus is our speaker tonight, and he will be speaking on the question of incumbency versus diversity. They're both ending in why so uh, right now is that Steve Cungus is about to speak. Let's welcome Steve. Appreciate that, Brown. All right. First of all, I want to say thank you for being here tonight on an important topic. The presentation is incumbency versus diversity was presented here for me and you during remarks and rebuttals, time will all lead to the goal of this presentation, which is to let us start the conversation by seeking answers to this one question. Why is it that if diversity is so revered in our society that we keep on voting in the same folks over and over and over again with the same skill set or lack of and expect different results? which we all know is a definition of insanity, okay? So what we can do right now is let everybody know that we have some prizes. We got qu quiz questions sprinkled throughout the whole presentation, okay? What we have is for prizes, I'm gonna ask you questions, only one person, I'm gonna call on you, and we have a socialist uh, DVD for anybody out there like socialism. We have books on incumbency, anti-incumbency, and we have three different kinds of t-shirts. All different sizes. We have medium, large, extra large, 2XL, and 3XL, okay? Just so everybody knows. Something for everybody, all right? All right. All right, back to the presentation of incumbency versus diversity. Oh, and by the way, please feel free to start this conversation right now on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, email, Facebook, texting, etc. Start it up. Let everybody know about this. All right, the first quiz question. Is everybody ready? What percentage approval rating for Congress do we have right now? What percentage approval rating? Does everybody know? 18%. How much? 18. 14%. Come on, get a prize. Come on up and get a prize. All right. Good job. Come on, get up there. Next quiz question. What approval rating is uh, for our state of Illinois General Assembly elected officials? Does anybody know? White. Approval rating for our uh, elected... Can this be a negative number? What's that? Can this be a negative number? Could be, could be. What is that negative number? Minus infinity. There you go. Come on up and get a prize. 10%, 10%. And just so everybody knows that, that that was from WJBC and IllinoisPolicy.org, that number, okay? I didn't make it up. Those numbers are in the gutter and very shameful, embarrassing. Sports teams use the anti-incumbency card. The best team, quiz question, the best team gets what draft pick in the next draft? The last. The last. That's right. Come on, get a prize. Pass it around, please. You'll see. Come on, get a prize. Hey, the best see. team gets the last pick. That's an anti-incumbency strategy. Hey, Steve. She wants one. She has one. Got to answer a quiz question, though. Stick around. Stick around. All right? Um, we all... Go ahead, Bill. What you got? Well, Come on, get a prize then. Get Take a, a prize. prize. Take a prize. All right, we all should be baffled by the low approval rating polls. And yet, we have a very high rate of incumbency. Yeah. The only thing that does come to mind is that we all must be saying that it is not my rep that is worthless, it is all the others. So hence, if we all feel that way, then the same exact folks get elected back into office. Hmm. Please take some time to reflect on that, huh? Almost, also, I almost forgot, one of the inspirations for this presentation was or is, Illinois is the worst run state. It has the widest gap of unfunded pensions. Does anybody know how much we're actually funding our pensions? I think, I better keep my mouth shut. 
I mean, a percentage. Out of 100%, we should be funding the pensions. How much are we actually funding the pensions? I think 21%, right? Come on, come on, keep going. Keep going. 17. Keep going, higher. 30. Keep going. 40. 39. Who got close to 39? Come on, get a prize. Get a shirt. Come on. Come on, get a prize. All right, all right. All right. All right. Come get a prize, Ellie. All right. We also have the worst credit rating agency in the state of Illinois. Does anybody know that? We have an A minus and an A three. Here's a quiz question. What are those three credit rating agencies? Does anybody know the three credit rating agencies? Moody's, Standards and Poor's, Equifax. And Fitch, come on, get a prize. No, I don't deserve one. All right. Get a prize. Pass, go, pass get a, go get a, go get one, Karina. No, I, 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 I did that. Come on, Karina, do it, do it. Don't worry about it. And the highest, here's a quiz question, and who has the highest city tax in the entire nation? What is that percentage of the city tax? Does anybody know? Uh, uh, Karina, you should get this one. Come on. The gentleman behind you, Karina. No? Chicago? Karina, go ahead. Chicago. Chicago. Right. But what percentage? What's the percentage? Uh, what again? The city sales tax, the highest in the nation. Well, it's 11% if you go to fast food stores. Uh, 11%. Close. 10.25%. Come on, get a prize. Yeah. All right. Did you say 10.25? Come on, get a prize. Come on. Karina, go get a t shirt. Integrity. We, we want integrity tonight, folks. Integrity. Isn't that what it's all about? we got to get Karina up there to get a t shirt. All right, Karina. Here, here's, the, here's the next quiz question. Harry Reid, Harry Reid, how many years has he been a senator in the United States Congress? Harry Reid, how many years? Too many. Come on, give a number. 46. 29 years. Nobody wants the prize, huh? Dick Durbin, how many years has Dick Durbin been a United States senator? Huh? 36. Senator, since 1996. How many years is that, man? Right. All right, 19. Come on, Bill, get a prize. Bill, get a prize, brother. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell has been a senator for how long? <laughs> 31. Get a prize. Seriously, very good, very good. Why? First of all, six years is way too long for any elected official. Even the president is only four years and captain eight years. Can you imagine what a different government we would have if the max term was eight years? for every elected position, and we don't or won't have to pay out some ridiculous retirement package, a.k.a. incumbency penalty tax. Thanks to the 22nd Amendment, the United States Constitution was ratified in what year? Does anybody know what, what year it was ratified? 1789. The, the, the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution, what year was it ratified? Does anybody know? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, everybody that gets a t-shirt, please use a bag. Please put your t-shirt in the bag so it doesn't get dirty. Very important, okay? 1947. 1951. Oh, that's right. Yes, this amendment was because of FDR who was elected. How many times was FDR elected? Four times. All right, come on, get a prize. Come on. Four times, four times. And he served from 1933 to 1945. All right. He died in office. He died in office. I think a month or two into his fourth term. All right, state governors. How many state governors have no term limits in our nation? How many states? I don't know. All of them? How many states have no term limits for the governors? 49. No. Yes. Lower. How many states have no term limits for our governors? You can keep running and running. You can be a governor of 75 years. All, all of them. No, no states have term limits. Uh -oh. right? No. no, Indiana does. Indiana is so It's a lower number then. If everyone's saying all or 49, it's, it's lower. 40, Come on. 40. No, it's a low number. Come on. 47. How Five. many states have no term limits? Five. Two. 12. 12, okay. All right. Pass it around. You'll see the states right there. Pass it around. Alabama. All right. Arkansas. 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 Arkansas.
All right, so let's define incumbency and diversity, okay? The meat of the topic. The first tier definition of diversity is, one, differing experiences, viewpoints, backgrounds, and life experiences. Tolerance of thought, ideas, people with view differing viewpoints, backgrounds, and life experiences. And the quality or state of having many different forms types, ideas, etc. Now the second tier definition of diversity. The state of having people who are different races or with different cultures in a group or organization. Now incumbency. The holding of an office. Charlie, keep it up. Test, test. Test, test. Charlie's messing with the sound hey, system. Hey, come on sound guy, good. All right, now incumbency. The, whole, the definition of an incumbency is the holding of an office or the period up, during Charlie. which one is held. All right, come on, sound guy. We got it, we got it. No? No, Charlie's screwing with it. All right, we'll sound guy. We got it back. That terrible, Tim. All right, here we go. Ah. All right. We got it. Everybody Just back in the sound turned off. So everybody back good. in the good. Let's can carry on. All right, so now incumbency definition. The holding of an office or the period during which one is held. The, t the time during which a person holds a particular office or a position. The state of holding a particular office or position. It sounds redundant, pun intended, okay? All right, let's get back to the uh, second definition of diversity. Dealing with race and culture. Personally, I would like to see more women and Latinos in city council and Illinois legislature. Here's a quiz question. How many Latinos are in the city of Chicago? Does anybody know? Yeah, about 30 percent of the population. Percentage, percentage, oh, percentage. 30%. 30 percent. Get a prize, man. Get a prize. Oh, All right. <laughs> and they only represent 15 percent or eight aldermen. It should be 15 Latino aldermen. And here's a quiz question. How many females are on the city council in Chicago? How many females? What number? <clears throat> Yeah, 12, 12. Come on, get a prize. 12. All right. So the state of Illinois General Assembly, reps only, not the, st not, not the senators. So in the state of Illinois General Assembly, how many women are in position? Are those elected positions? There's 118 positions. How many are females? 25. Higher. Uh, 42. 36. And how many Latinos do you think we have? Out of 118, how many Latinos are state of Illinois reps? How many Latinos? Give me a number. Ten. Come on, get a prize. Eight. You're absolutely right. Eight. <laughs> yeah, Latinos are 15% of the state. <clears throat> so we should have 18 Latinos as state reps in the state of Illinois General Assembly. So they drastically lack proper representation. And with these stats, a Latino or a woman is a shoo-in to get elected. Are you a senator? Just based, just based on race and gender alone. That's only if you go with the second tier definition of diversity regarding race and gender. Why do you think somebody based on race and gender? We want more Lithuanians, Charlie. You and me, we need more Lithuanians. Pass around, guys. Pass around, pass around. More Lithuanians, that's what I say. All right. <clears throat> how many, here's a quiz question, how many, how many residents does each state of Illinois rep, represent? 250,000. All right, Charlie. Lower. This is a state rep. How oh, many residents rep. Oh, does state each state rep, rep represent? 50,000. Higher. 60. Higher. 75. Higher. 100. 110. Ah. How many residents does each state of Illinois senator represent? Question first. 220. 220. 220. Good. All reps are two-year terms, and state senators are a combination of... Here's your, here's your political question out here. Does anybody know the state of Illinois senators' term combinations? Does anybody know? Four, four, two. Oh, seriously, Bill. He's got it. Yeah. Bill, come on. Bill, oh, Bill. He's, a couple already. He's, He's absolutely it. right. The terms Bill just said, they're 442 or 242. Either way, there's a two-year 
in any 10-year uh, combination. That's how, they're, that's how they go. I didn't know that until recently. Very interesting. So all all terms are not four years for the state, state senators, Illinois State Senator. Okay, it's time for my diversity story. No snoozing allowed, okay? So I will ask that all of you in the audience and at home, you YouTubers, actively listen to my short story and decide for yourself if you are welcoming of diversity, new ideas, cultures, situations, and if you are welcoming to diversity, great. But if you're not, please ask yourself, why am I not welcoming of diversity of ideas, possibilities, other ways of doing things or seeing things or understanding things? So, on that note, here is the story of diversity. It starts with two parents, you picked the mix of parents, raising two kids called Johnny and Judy, okay? These parents are very encouraging of Johnny and Judy to experience as much diversity as possible. So on the first day of kindergarten, Johnny and Judy go up to a tall kid and stick out their hand and shake his hand and say, hi, I'm Johnny, this is Judy. And we could not help but notice that you are four foot tall and the rest of us are three foot tall. Is your mom or dad tall? And then they talk about how they think it is cool to be tall at their ages. And the tall kid appreciates the recognition and they've just made their first contact with diversity, okay? Quiz question coming up. <clears throat> you ready? It's an exciting one. Then Johnny and Judy meet Fat kids, skinny kids, kids that climb on rocks, tough kids, sissy kids, even kids with chicken pox. What song jingle is that from? Hot dogs. Armor hot there dogs. There you go. Come on, hot get the prize. Careful. Love to bite. I already won one. All right, all right. All right. Good all right. job, good job. <laughs> then they meet a redhead, then they meet a buck tooth kid, the loud kid, the quiet kid, kid with the afro, kid with the jerry curl, kid with glasses. They meet the kids coming to school in hand-me-down clothes. They meet a bully and on and on. You get the picture. All of these kids that appear to be outcasts or different really appreciated being recognized by Johnny and Judy for their positive attributes or their uniqueness. <clears throat> they are, now they are eight years old. Johnny and Judy start to jump rope, get good at reading, writing, arithmetic, and start to play chess, do gymnastics and bowling, etc. Johnny and Judy are also starting to learn more about diversity. They learn who the slow kids are, about 10% in their class. Who the average kids are, about 80%. And who the brainiacs are, about another 10%. So out of 30 kids in a classroom, 24 are average, 3 are slow, and 3 are brainiacs. They see who the quiet kids are, who the disruptive kids are, the creative kids, the leader of kids, the class clown. We have a few class clowns here at the college, don't we? Yeah. A lot of them. Any gay ones? Johnny and Judy make it their business to get to know all the kids. And Johnny and Judy's parents are very proud of them. Then Johnny and Judy are 14 years old and go to high school. They befriend all kind of kids, but they learn that some of those kids are to be avoided like little Charlie Paydock. Right. <laughs> because they do bad things. Right. But they still find the good and the naughty kids. But they find with little Charlie Paddock that they have to dig really deep into the abyss to find the good in little Charlie Paddock. <laughs> Johnny and Judy join all kind of clubs in high school to experience even more diversity in their lives. Johnny and Judy in their first year of high school join the student council. There are ten kids on the council. Johnny and Judy hold a council meeting and try and tackle an issue that all the students have in the high school. Johnny and Judy notice as they sit at the council table and listen to all the other council members' ideas to the issue at hand that Johnny and Judy are amazed to find that every single council member has a unique way to resolve the issue at hand. John and Judy start to ask questions and start to learn from the council about diversity of ideas and how and why each member of the council, I'm sorry, John and Judy start to ask questions and start to learn from the, from the council about diversity of ideas and how and why each member of the council has such a different way of solving the same issue. Johnny and Judy 
Learn that you can't have ten different solutions. So John and Judy learned the art of compromise. Does anybody know the art of compromise? John and Judy try to really understand what it is that each council member wants or needs. All right, I believe you. Wants or needs to get the issue resolved, and because the council is very understanding of diversity, each member comes to an agreed upon solution that will please all members of the council. And this is happening every day in our schools, folks. John and Judy start to learn from many kids, teachers, parents, neighbors, religious leaders, the family of college complexes, you, that there is a whole set of different or varied ways to look at life, goals, ambitions, loyalties, the economy, equality, inequality, government, foods, chores, family, friends, etc. So Johnny and Judy go through high school and enter college. They finish college and move in together in the 33rd Ward, 4th Precinct at 2901 West Addison. <gasps> Does anybody know where that's at? Yeah. Here. In oh, Chicago. Yeah. They learn about the 50 wards and about the different precincts in our wards. They learn that there are 28 precincts in the 33rd Ward and 45 precincts in the 46th. This is the end of the story of how Johnny and Judy became so welcoming of diversity and how open they are to doing, seeing, and understanding many things in many different ways, okay? What follows is how they put their diversity to work, their open-mindedness and desire for a better life for all. Isn't that what we all want? A no. better life for all. Yeah. No, it isn't. Could be, could be. Into action. So now, Johnny and Judy are in a system of life called democracy. In the 33rd Ward, 4th Precinct, and what year does Chicago, quiz question, what year does Chicago Incorporate or become a city? 1837. 1837. 37, I heard what you said. 37. Get a prize, Sid. So, John and Judy see several issues in their neighborhood and take it upon themselves to contact the precinct captain. Does anybody know the name of their precinct captain? Come on. Precinct captain. Nobody knows the name of theirs. No such thing. I'm going to say, maybe mine is Deb Mel. Is she a precinct captain? No. Maybe an alderman. So, no, so, the, the alderman so, just so everybody knows, on a side note, I called my uh, alderman, <clears throat> and they said, we don't do that in the 46th ward anymore. Oh, is that right? Yeah, uh, and he said, they might be doing other wards, but not in the 46th, where I'm from. Uh, all right, and, and, the, and the precinct cam is very vague when things will get fixed. Johnny and Judy wait a week and touch base with the precinct captain again, and he is not helpful or hopeful at all. The precinct captain has been in the position for five years. So, Johnny and Judy go to the alderman for the first time. He says a few things and thanks them for coming forth. What a nice guy, huh? Another week goes by and nothing. They go back to the precinct captain and nothing. Finally, they go back to the alderman and share their frustration, and two days later, everything is taken care of and the precinct captain has been replaced. But only after Johnny and Judy threatened to vote out the aldermen. Hmm. Right. Knowing how many friends that Johnny and Judy can win and influence in his ward. Then the aldermanic election comes up, and Johnny and Judy are very excited to participate in the whole process from start to finish. And Johnny and Judy start talking with their friends, family, neighbors, social club folks, churchgoers, workmates, bar patrons, coffee shop folks, etc., etc., about the upcoming aldermanic election. Johnny and Judy recall when they were growing up, and I'm sure like the rest of us, listening to the numerous TV campaign ads and receiving daily loads of junk mail <clears throat> telling them nothing and watching the televised debates with disappointing short generic responses. Right. I would like to have seen and heard much more during detail during the various debates instead of generalizations and empty promises sprinkled with the usual political rhetoric. John Angel would also like to have or seen or heard the TV campaign ads that describe some promises with specifics that the candidate will do in a four-year term. Some promises that they will fulfill to improve the ward that we can hold them to. Johnny and Judy talked with their large and diverse social circle about Johnny and Judy wanting to experience a different kind of aldermanic campaign. We, so Johnny and Judy are excited to introduce some meaningful opportunities to learn a whole lot more about their candidates for aldermen. 
Johnny and Judy talk with their diverse social circle, sharing their ideas to get the candidates to stop giving generalizations that are so generic and non-committal. Political rhetoric with hot air. We always hear that, don't we? Johnny and Judy have a meeting with all five aldermanic candidates, including the incumbent alderman in the same room at the same time, and let the aldermanic candidates know that they can share in the campaign program or be left out. It was, it, is, it was up to the candidates, but it is not business as usual kind of campaign. John and Judy and their friends have told all five candidates to save their money and not do TV ads and do not send tons of junk campaign mail, but we'll need to get involved in a following process. It's a very exciting process. This is diverse thinking. All candidates will meet every Tuesday for 90 days. Hours are 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. These Tuesdays will be labeled Telling Tuesdays. Telling Tuesdays. First one, one, the first Telling Tuesday is debates. Two, second Telling Tuesday, 30-minute candidate talks about themselves at the podium. We get to know them and their promises. We want to hear their promises. Three, third Telling Tuesday, candidates on stage, all of them at the same time. For Q and A time, Q and A from residents, not a moderator. The residents in award number four. The fourth telling Tuesday is informal, mix and mingle. They come off the stage and talk informally with all who show up. We get to see their eye contact, their body language. They're telling the truth. And every every Tuesday, the candidates are are at a new location so that all the ward residents will get to be in close proximity of a telling Tuesday. Ah, I forgot to mention that Johnny and Judy and all the ward are expecting all five candidates to mention their top 30 yes. items that they will accomplish while being the alderman. Think about it. The 30 number is simply one goal per month in the first three years. Is that too much to ask for from an alderman? One, to keep one promise, to fulfill one promise. Quiz question, does anybody know how much an alderman earns in the city of Chicago? Uh, 125000 Yeah, 117. Jim had it back there. Come on, Jim, get a prize. 117, come on. <clears throat> that is not too much to expect. Break it down about one goal met per month in the first three years. Johnny and Judy does not want or care about candidate bashing. They want specifics as to what will be accomplished in the next automatic term in their ward. So there is no need to talk trash about other candidates. We just want to know about the candidates and what they're going to do and how and when they're going to accomplish their 30 promises. If the new alderman does not accomplish her goals in a time frame to the, that the candidate mentioned and promised, they would be recalled. They'd be recalled. But, this is a big but, City Council will have to approve a recall forbid provision to the City Charter. The reason is, does anybody know what is the only, uh, quiz question, what is the only elected position that is recallable in the state of Illinois? Governor. Governor. Governor it is. Come on down, get a prize. All right. <laughs> only a governor. <coughs> Why is the recall? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Only a governor can be recalled as of 2010. It's a recent thing as of 2010, because of Lagoyevich. This is the reason it got passed, but it's extremely difficult. You need 15% of the voters must sign a petition. 10% must be in 25 counties. Another quiz question. How many counties does Illinois have? 102. Look at that. Richie, Don All Richie, right. got it, baby. Well, I'm going to let, let Sid have my prize. And, and, then, and then you need 10 Republicans' permission, 10 Democrats' permission, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a real long, crazy process to get a, um, a, a governor recalled. But no alderman recall or state representative recall in Illinois. But Wisconsin and Michigan loves the recall. So we have it. We have a template for it already in states that are our neighbors, okay? Just so everybody knows that. <clears throat> so Johnny and Judy wants you to know that it is the voter's responsibility to vet all candidates for elected office. And once the vote is cast, 
we have to live with our vote, whether a candidate gets in or not. <laughs> Unless the candidate breaks his or her promises to complete their 30 promised goals. Then when a candidate does not complete their promises, we the people will petition to recall the official after 12 months. We can do this. They're doing this next door. And not only are they doing it uh, in, in Wisconsin and Michigan, they're doing it, I think, in Arizona and uh, New Mexico, which have one of the uh, uh, easiest uh, recall systems. You would think that Johnny and Judy are very satisfied with Italian Tuesdays for the automatic racism. They are. They were. They are. So I'm going to give you the next handout. This is a spending budget for the city of Chicago. There you go, guys. All right. Enjoy and pass it around. Enjoy and pass it around, right? Enjoy and pass it around. Enjoy and pass it around. Ah, thank you. All right. I did not print out this, how the city raises money. You can Google that. This is the spending budgets and all the uh, high level. This is high level pages right here, okay? There is great diversity in how we all think how best to spend our tax dollars. Who gets to decide? Why can't we vote on all budget line items? This is a diverse idea on how to spend and collect taxes. We usually vote for or against government bonds, don't we? Government bonds come up, we say yes or no. What's the difference? Why can't we start to vote for our budget? And we vote for special projects, etc. Now comes time for the Mueller race. The whole city is excited about the new format of Telling Tuesdays, but Johnny and Judy are also fiscally responsible citizens and they want accountability, <coughs> excuse me, of how much that the city spends in many different areas. Johnny and Judy do not want to be told by the alderman or mayor where and how much will be spent for certain areas within the budget. So Johnny and Judy demand that we, the people, start to vote on how much we, the city, spend on specific line items in the city budget. Everybody visualize that? Yeah. You go to the polls and you say, I want an increase, decrease, or leave alone. Johnny and Judy and their diverse friends and contacts demand that the mayor and the aldermen and the board of elections start to have we the people vote on at least 10 line items in the budget. Voting on the budget every two years. Not changing the system, just adding that to the uh, ballot. This is the implementation of the people, for the people, by the people to take even more control over government spending and government taxes. We vote on the biggest parts of the budget. Every two years, we the people will vote on 10 spending line items, line items of the city budget. We will have a binding vote, not advisory, non-binding questions to increase the spending on the line item or vote to decrease the spending on the line item. We will have a chance to increase the budget line item or decrease by 1%. 3% or 5%. Can you guys visualize that? Or the voters can vote no change in the line item budget. Examples of what can be voted on are, these are just examples, only examples, I'm not endorsing it. Uh, we the people can vote to increase or decrease spending on our schools, or on our streets and sanitation, or spending on Midway or O'Hare public health spending will increase the funding for pensions, etc., etc. But as responsible voters, we must realize that if we vote for an overall increase to the spending side, then an equal amount must be raised through taxation. And we could vote on the taxation side as well, with such things as examples, only examples, property taxes, do we want to increase or decrease property taxes, transportation taxes, recreation taxes, public utility taxes, etc., etc. Johnny and Judy highly encourage everyone to look at the entire city budget online. It's only, <laughs> does anybody know how many pages the city budget is online? 525. How much? How much? 525. Woo! You got it, man. It's 545 pages. Very good. I only read 525. <laughs> Come on and get a prize, man. Get a prize. Hey. <laughs> Our city budget spending taxation is how many billions of dollars is the city of Chicago budget? Does anybody know? No. How many billions in the city budget? Four and a half. Higher. Five. 
Six billion. All right, seven and a half billion dollars of our city of Chicago budget, just so everybody knows. We the voters would then have control over how much is spent. The alderman and mayor will know our concerns. We will tell the politicians how the money should be spent and not just be told how the money should be how they should spend our money. This is our city and our money. Our voices will be heard and adhered to in the budget process of spending and taxation. We the people should also vote on a curriculum in our school with an eye on the nation's future. Namely STEM. Does anybody know what STEM stands for? The acronym. Go ahead, Richie. Science, technology, engineering, and math. Come on, get a prize, buddy. Get a prize. Very good, very good. I believe everybody heard that. As a core for grade school and high school. And in high school, allow some arts courses, philosophy, painting, drawing, plays, operas, ballet, sculpting, music, gym, debate, etc., etc. <laughs> The, the Chicago sales tax increase went from 9.25 to 10.25 percent. The reason it jumped that one percent is because the county raised their their uh, their, their uh, amount to to 1.75 percent from 7.75 percent. So they increased it one percent. That's the reason it got increased. The county did it. Everybody else stayed the same. State is 6.25 percent. City is 1.25 percent and a regional transportation authority is 1%. We are officially the highest tax rate in the nation. <coughs> so I want everybody on your way home, I want everybody to have some fun and sing this song to yourself. Sing this song to yourself, to your friends, your family, your neighbors. It's a very exciting song. Pass it around, y'all. Pass, 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 pass it around. One. Oh, this is the Beatles song. Go ahead. One. There you go. Let me tell you how. Pass these around. Pass it around. Pass it around. Sing another way home. It's called the Tax Man. Yep. Yeah. That. This is. This is. Uh, On that note, we tax bottles of water at five cents per bottle. Ticket sales, electricity, this is, this is fountain a, drinks. Yeah. And here, here's a great, great question. Does anybody know what the tire fee in Chicago is? How much? If you buy a brand new tire for your car or your truck. How much is that tax for your tire? Fifteen dollars. Keep going. Down. Twenty. Keep going down. Down. It's one dollar per tire. So you're paying four dollars to get brand new tires for a city tax. We could raise it if you're not. If you, if you think it's okay, we could raise it to you know five bucks. It's okay. <clears throat> But you, but we would go to the polls and vote on it, so it wouldn't be just one or two people, be everybody. <laughs> Let's move to a, to a diverse thinking tax raising issue. Here, here comes an exciting uh, 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 proposal. Johnny and Judy know that there are a lot of shootings and killings in the south side and the west sides. The reason for these killings and shootings are all about dope. Marijuana, cocaine, heroin, meth, etc. Kids on the west side and south side are shooting each other not because they hate each other, but because of our lust or thirst for dope. Dope dealing kids are just protecting their territory. Anyone who encroaches in a dope dealer's territory gets shot or killed. These shootings occur because of our never talked about lust for dope. We love dope. Just ask El Chapo. Shorty for short. He loves America and is more than happy to supply us with tons and tons and tons of dope, literally, to satisfy our lust for dope. No one in our city government or county government is talking about the real reason these kids are shooting and sometimes killing each other. Does the city want a purpose activity? Well, Johnny and Judy and friends say legalize marijuana. Control it. Tax it. Take it out of the hands of the wealthy suppliers. They pay zero for income taxes. And there are already four states legally selling recreational marijuana. Does anybody know, quick question, what four states you can legally buy marijuana? Colorado, Michigan. Colorado, Michigan. Oh, let's get, let's get Mike. What's that, Mike? Illinois, not Illinois. Illinois. No. Not, not medicinal, not medicinal marijuana. This is recreational, where you don't need a license or anything. You just go in, buy a joint. Colorado, Washington, and Oregon. 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 Oregon.
So yeah. you can, uh, Colorado. Okay, okay I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna give it to you. You ready? Here we go. It's gonna be Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. Yeah. So you can legally go walk in and buy pot and buy pot. Just so everybody knows, factually, right now, though, only two states can actually do that. The other two states are starting to get it, get it together online. By the end of this year, it'll be, it'll be available. And those two states this year to be available is going to be uh, Alaska and Oregon will be available. But right now, you can physically walk to uh, or, or fly to Colorado and Washington. You can fly as high as you want. All right. Enough. All right, enough of the tax man. We're going to move on to the county issues. The, lead, the little talked about county issues. What does the county do and provide to us besides being the property tax keeper? Roads and bridges. Forest reserves, there you go. Golf courses, county jail, and what else? Hospital. Hospital. There's Stroger Hospital. And, and Johnny and Judy highly encourage you to research and Google what the county does and what they spend our tax dollars on. How many pages is the Cook County budget? 1,000. <coughs> Oh. 4,999. Well, what you're supposed to do is say 1,001. 372 pages for the county, y'all. All right, come on, get the prize. The spending budget of our beloved county is, does anybody know? Well, I'm just going to say it. 3.1 billion in spending versus 2.6 billion in taxes. Yes, we have a deficit of five, of, uh, Five hundred thousand dollars. That's the reason we get the tax tax increase. Just everybody knows that. All right. This is this is the uh, this is the county budget. Just so everybody knows. Read it. Pass it around. Read it. Pass it around. County budget. All right. County budget. All right. You gotta have a magnifying glass for that, huh? <laughs> All right. Read the fine print. Yeah. Read the fine print. This is a good stopping point to ask ourselves. Why is there a higher turnout rate for national elections, i.e. the presidential elections, than other years? Johnny and Judy ask, what is more important, the national vote or the local vote? The local Which vote, do you local. think affects us more, local issues or federal issues? Federal. Local. local. This is a good point. This is a good point to inject. This is a good point to inject that I dislike the hate mongers from the Democratic Party the Republican Party, the Libertarian Party, and the Green Party. Let us find our common causes and celebrate our compromises in order to move forward together. To find common ground is vital. I do like the Bud Light Party, though. Does anybody know about the Bud Light Party? No. Yeah, the Super Bowl. Check the it out. The Bud, Bud, Bud Light Party. Why not Bud the Bud Light Party? Bud Light Party. Bud Light Party. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's talk about the state reps and senators. How much is a state? How much does a state rep earn per year? And they're part timers, by the way. This is what we know. They're part timers. One hundred and fifty thousand. Half, half of that. Go ahead. Seventy-five thousand. Yes, there you go. You get a prize. Sixty-eight thousand plus. They get one hundred eleven dollars per diem per day. Per diem? Why do you need a per diem for travel, food, and all other stuff? Hotels. So here's a great question. How many states pay their legislators more than the state of Illinois? How many states? Zero. Does anybody know? No. Zero, right? It's kind of because no. in California. How many states? Come on. Huh? About five. Five, right. Four. Four states. You're going to see, sorry, you're going to see them right here. You're going to see them right here. These four states. Now, somebody mentioned California. Yeah, I think you're right. <coughs> oh, my, I'm Alaska, still living there. Yeah. Can we get anything out of here? Uh, our, 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 and Illinois are part-timers. This everybody knows that. Illinois legislators are classified as part-timers. Just give me those. They are a despicable That's bunch. It. No budget passes it's July. Hmm. They don't want to let them do their job. Will there be disagreements? You bet. Will there be compromise? You bet. Do we demand that they do their jobs? You bet. They are not doing their jobs because there is no recall system in place or a demand for their top 15 promises. For two year terms, 15 promises. And of what and of what they will accomplish in their term. They have nothing to lose with no recall or demand that they do their job. They feel invincible, and they are. 
going to hand out right now the Illinois Senate re-elections. Pitiful. There's many open seats. Very pitiful. Please read, pass it around. Read it, pass it around. Open seats. Read and pass. Illinois Senate seats available. <coughs> Empty. No competition. Why are Madigan, Carton, Rauner holding the state budget hot hostage? One party, everybody knows this, one party holds a supermajority, rendering the governor's veto worthless, and still that party refuses to pass a budget. Uh, could it be that there are secretly many independent legislators in Springfield not willing to go along with Madigan? He has to save face at our expense. Let's get rid of the bum. Hey, we all should be protesting down in 65th and Pulaski, his hometown, his home area. Yes, everybody knows that. After the Bernie Sanders gig, we should go down to 65th and Pulaski. Next is the, is the pensions fee now. Our legislative pensions an oxymoron. I have a quiz question. How many states have intestinal fortitude? I mean, how many states have no pensions for their politicians? How many states? <coughs> Read and pass around, guys. Read and pass around. Read and pass around. Five, ten, twenty. Come on, how many? How many do you think? How many smart states out there do you think we have? Higher. Keep, keep going. Higher. Twelve. We have 10 states that say, heck no, we're not paying an incumbency penalty tax. Seven had already had it in place, and three had intestinal fortitude in the 90s to say no more, never again. So any new incoming folks don't get that pension in three of those states. All right? We need to ask ourselves, why do politicians get a retirement package? Government of the people, by the people, for the people. How and when did we ever think that it was okay or acceptable to pay an incumbency penalty, a.k.a. a retirement package? How did we let this one slip through the cracks? It's not too late to end or abolish the pensions for new and incoming candidates for state legislator. Three states have done already in the 90s, folks. The candidates for Illinois state legislator would operate under the same provisions as the rest of the city <coughs> municipal county candidates. The 30-item promise, the telling Tuesdays for 90 days, first week debates, second week 30-minute candidates speaking with the 30-item promises, third week Q&A time with the residents and not a moderator, fourth week informal mixed mingle time, every telling Tuesday would be in a different location with no need for irrelevant TV ads that tell us nothing, with no junk mail that tells us nothing. And another vital factor, we would also vote on the state budget. 10 line items to increase or decrease by 1, 3, or 5 percent. Illinois budget. Does anybody know what our budget is in Illinois? We don't have a budget. There you go. 26 billion. We don't have a budget. We don't have a budget. It's underfunded. What is the spending side versus the uh, taxation side? Does anybody know? We're in debt. The state has a deficit right now. We have $32 billion in taxes and $37 billion in expenditures. So everybody knows it. Here's a little, here's a little uh, sample of uh, information of what we spend our money on in these states and what our neighbors spend money on in these states. Oh, all right. And then here's the budget for the state of Illinois. State of Illinois. Pass it around. Pass it down. Pass it around. Pass it down. There you go, David. You done? Yes. <laughs> this is, uh, and I'll get into that later about how it all goes and flows, but uh, it is unconstitutional the way it happened. The question must be raised, keep an eye, keep an open mind about everything. Why are there state fund transfers to local cities, municipalities? Why? Why not have the local cities, municipalities tax on their own? Why do we need tax transfers from the state legislator? Huh. Does it mean that with the local city cannot afford the expense of the product or service that they want to do? 
People pay property taxes uh, and that goes to the county, right? And then as we districting, David's favorite, a form of slavery, bondage, submission. There has been a practice of the local, city, county, state, fed legislators that are the majority in control to control the redistricting or gerrymandering of the voters' reps. Johnny and Judy propose a fair, unbiased redrawing of the lines held once every 30 years from an unbiased group called We the Voters. How about We the Voters? The Cyrus lines go every 30 years. If you want redistricting, put the map to the voters and we decide once every 30 years. <coughs> Why gerrymandering when it's 100% unnecessary? Even President Obama, for those of you that watched his uh, uh, State of the Union address, he talked about gerrymandering. He talked about how de detrimental it is to, to our democracy. Now we move into diversity. Uh, the last area, the federal government, everybody's favorite. Everybody loves the federal government. 14% approval rating, and you'd expect a whole new crew to be voted in and resolve many, many, many issues. Wouldn't you? Please take some time to reflect. But we keep voting the same folks in over and over and over again. Someone's voting these folks back in and again and again and expecting different results. It's the same with our aldermen, our mayors, our county folks, our state legislator folks. There are a few areas that we need to be concerned about that are not, not, not being discussed, debated, negotiated, deliberated. Social Security, Medicare, military, IRS, foreign aid, Congress pensions. Yes. I got a fun fact coming up about Congress pensions. You'll pee in your pants. Yeah. VA hospitals. Legalized pot, ending filing of 1040 at the IRS or state level. We have many unresolved issues, even after many years of it being front page news. One of them are, we have 12 million non-citizens. Many folks get a 90 day visa or no visa and decide to stay here illegally. And the gun registration thing, even after Sandy Hook, quiz question, how many, what percentage of Americans want its Congress to do something about gun control. What percentage? I don't know if it's more than half. 90% of Americans told Congress, we want you to do something. Fake it, man. Just do something. They snubbed their nose at us. This is our elected officials. 90% of America. Same thing with immigration. Quiz question, how many amendments to the Constitution of the United States? How many what? How many, how many amendments are in there in, in the Constitution? The United States Constitution. 27. 27, David. Come on, get a prize, man. You did good. David got it. And here, here's a fun one. What was the last amendment? What year was the last amendment ratified? Don't say anything, David. <laughs> what year was the last amendment ratified? Does anybody know? 52. No. Re it was recent. Well, recent. Recently recent. 1992. And what did that amendment say and do? Limiting con congressional pay increases. I will read what the amendment says. This is what they spend their time doing. Huh? No law varying the compensation for the services of the senators or reps shall take effect until an election or representatives shall have intervened. They spent their time on this. We had other pressing issues. Does anyone here, does anyone here feel a need for Tums after all this data coming out at you? Come on up and get it, man. Really, come on. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Now give it back, give it back. Give it, give it. Take, one, take one, take one, take one, take one. Did you know? Did you know? <laughs> did you know? What a moment. Did, did you know that Bernie Sanders, and I'm really pointing out that only one candidate during this campaign has mentioned a lifting of the cap on Social Security tax. Does anybody know that? Yes. And why? Huh? A little higher, a little higher. It's the next quiz question, but keep going higher. The question is, what is the cap on a Social Security tax? 191,000. 500. Go ahead. Come on, Gene. Get a prize. Good job. Good job, brother. Come on. 
And what is a Social Security tax? What's the percentage that we employ or ease pay on our paychecks? What's the percentage of Social Security? 6.20. 6.20. And not only that, but the employer must match that, just so everybody knows. And the same thing with the uh, entrepreneurs. And there's a cap. So there's a cap on paying Social Security tax. Bernie Sanders is the only one mentioning that we should lift the cap. Who here has a war on the wealthy, Paydoc? Well, here's your moment to bring this issue to the forefront and get this cap lifted. Come on. Yeah, Only know. issue is, Bernie Sanders, want, I heard him, he said it through his own lips, he said 250000 should be the cap. So he's leaving a lot of money on the table from 118000 to 250000 I'm pretty disappointed that he said that. He said that. All right, so who pays Social Security? Little, little, little factual we'll stuff. Pass around. But, but it's pass not around, profit. You're done passing around. Pay so much money, you get tons of extra. When you're done passing around, all right? That's not enough to do. All right. All right. And Medicare has no cap. Why does Medicare have no cap and Social Security has a cap? So, why a disparity? Medicare is 1.45 percent with no cap versus Social Security with a cap of 6.2. I'm sorry, 118 k, and that, that percent is 6.20 percent. Please do not say the wealthy can afford to pay beyond 118 cap. That's irrelevant. Maybe the wealthy are paying for 15 kids. We just had a population presentation, right? Where all the relatives are unemployed, or or who knows? Maybe they're supporting a, a, an orphanage. She makes 400K and 250K goes to keep the orphanage open. Who knows, who cares, it's none of anyone's business how they or you spend your money income, is it? The point is, folks earning over 118K need to pay their social security tax with no cap. Incumbency versus diversity. Why do we not hold Durbin's feet and Kirk's feet and Quigley's feet to the fire on this one simple topic? Diversity of ideas. Why not wake up one hour early every Wednesday and write letters, write emails, text, leave voicemails for those three folks? Durbin, Quigley, and Kirk. Or tweet, or Snapchat, or Facebook, or Pinterest. Why not wake up an hour early and every Thursday and go have coffee at the cafe with 15 folks and tell them what you're doing and your ideas? What is AARP doing to help fix Social Security or Medicare? I don't see them doing anything to fix Medicare or Social Security. They're not encouraging anybody to help out. Why don't the politicians, why don't the politicians talk about the topic of getting rid of the Social Security cap? We have the power to recall any politician that we want. We could hold the power, yes. not the special interest to give the big money to the politicians, campaigners, super PACs. We the people hold the power. We just need to start using it and letting it be known how we are going to use it. So we want the same old thinking of let's not mess with the cap on Social Security of 118K, or we want the cap eliminated. Can we start to vote folks in that will carry out our wishes, our demands, our solutions? You, only you hold the answer to that question. Medicare, we pay out 1.45% of our taxes, of our paychecks. Everybody when they hit 65 gets Medicare. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, entitlement. Military bases, the Pentagon says, how many bases do we have overseas according to the Pentagon? About uh, 200 zillion, I think. Pentagon says, how many? 800. 800. Pentagon, Pentagon, not Randall Ron Paul, not yet. Pentagon. Huh? 622. 662. Come on, get a prize, Charlie. You're right. 662 in 38 countries. Ron and Rand Paul, Rand and Ron Paul say how many, how many countries and how many, and how many uh, bases? 800. Yeah, 900 bases in 130 countries. Wow. And we have 160 independent countries in the world and 50 dependent countries in the world. <clears throat> Why not cut those bases in half? Why can't we just have, you know, 330-some bases in uh, 38 countries? What's the matter with that? Security. 
Huh? National security. We can, we can still have it with 300. With, National with, uh, tyranny. Huh? Why can't we have it with tw 10 bases per country? It'll it all work out. And that would save about $200 billion a year. As President Obama said during his last city unit address on 12 January, we are the greatest and strongest military in the world. We spend more in our military than the next eight largest economies. I looked it up. We actually do. Of the world, yeah. what, that's powerful. Yeah. That is powerful. I believe that he really meant that it, it is ridiculous that we spent that much on our bases overseas. <laughs> Quiz question Does anybody know how much we spent on foreign aid payouts? Uh, foreign uh, aid. 35 billion dollars we spent on foreign aid. <laughs> how about we cut them in half? Not only that. But how about we send over our own folks for jobs and income, and instead of the foreign aid going directly into the pockets of the dictators, let's send our own folks to those countries, if invited, to build the roads, the hospitals, or schools, their whatever, and we keep our folks there until all is stabilized. This is diversity thinking. Next topic, and we already talked about it, term limits. We already do this. It's called the Peace Corps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The president, the highest position in the nation, is a term limit. Why not the senators and the reps? If term limits are good enough for the president, decreed by a 22nd constitutional amendment, why not the senators and the reps? Next topic is affirmative action. Affirmative action still exists in a land of fairness for all. Don't we discriminate when we use affirmative action as a basis in hiring, in contracting, in anything? Let's end affirmative action and keep America free and equal for all. And shouldn't the best qualified be in the colleges or build our roads? Let's get the most qualified Americans. Do we expect anything less? Does skin color or nationality or religion or belief system make you a better road builder or a better college person? We demand and expect the best qualified person to be in college and the best, most qualified to build our roads. Oh, and they should be held accountable if the road comes apart or has potholes. Let's end the discriminatory practices of affirmative action. No one should be discriminated against. What are your thoughts? Hmm. Let's take time to reflect. Next topic, we're coming down, we're winding it down, y'all. <clears throat> Next topic is 1040 IRS. Why do we have to reconcile the end of the year? It's all just a smokescreen. If you get a refund, you love the IRS. If you don't, you dislike them. Most folks get a refund. It's a smokescreen done by the IRS to make you feel good about paying taxes. If you get a refund, wow, yes, good, yay, great. Well, now compare the refund to the amount of taxes that you paid in all year. Now see if you yelp a great expletive or WTF. Why not pay as you go? And there will never again be a need to reconcile on 1040. I don't dislike the IRS. I have respect the IRS. And they will always be here because they will always need to collect and ensure all are paying properly. But why not have groups like the banks and other institutions collect and pay the taxes for us? Why not we have uh, employers do that for us? Why not end the tear on average folks of the 1040 IRS tax time? Let's end 1040 tax time. I. How many pages are in the tax code? Does anybody know? Quiz question. 14 volumes, I thought. How many pages? Uh, don't know. Like 5,000, right? Keep going. Way up there. It's way up there, brother. 75,000. Yeah, and I looked it up. I thought it was 64,000, then I saw then I saw it was 75,000. So uh, somewhere between there, it's ridiculous. All right, let me stop right here and say, if no one hears our cries, what good have our cries done? All I'm saying is, let's cry to our friends, our family, community, churches, aldermen, mayors, state reps, and senators, and governors, and U.S. reps of what our real concerns are. In a social group, do we? Don't we dismiss or poopoo on folks that are not of our thinking? Why do we allow our politicians to carry on as if our thinking does not matter? The diversity thinking is, why not pay taxes as we go? A pay-as-you-go system. Why do we have to file at the end of the year? Why not pay our taxes up front and be done with it? Incumbency thinking versus diversity thinking. Why do folks have to spend hours upon hours gathering? 
If a parent of three kids is struggling to make 18000 wants to get a little boost with the IRS, a transfer of wealth by filing some sort of tax form, I'm okay with that. So the poor will always have a safety net as they do today. Is that thinking of competency or diversity? So let me ask a tough question. Why are we not writing, emailing, voicemailing, visiting, tweeting, Facebooking, Snapchatting the politicians every Wednesday and meeting with our 15 friends and acquaintances every Thursday to let the politicians know about our topics that we are most passionate about? Forget about the presidential elections. I'm talking about every election, every time. Let's keep them accountable to us and not to the special interest groups. I never hear passion about our aldermen, mayor, county reps, state reps, elections, but a whole lot of passion about our far removed, far removed from our daily life president. I hear more talk about the president than I do about an alderman or an Illinois state rep or state senator. We can truly cut the budget by 25% if we shut down the pork barrel grabs. How about stopping the billions of dollars going to the Fed and then transferring back to the states? Why does this happen? You know why. Control. It's all about control from the Fed. Keep us under the Fed. VA hospitals. VA hospitals. Why? There seems to be a parallel of systems happening in America. Okay. We already have numerous hospitals around the country. The average veteran only wants, think about it, the average veteran only wants, they want an insurance card to take care of them. So why not close oh, all VA hospitals? I'm, oh I'm getting there, man. I got about three or four minutes. Charlie wants 70 minutes, just so you know. I, I timed his, man. Okay. Close all redundancy of the health care. We already have hospitals around the country to take care of anybody and everybody. Just give the vets an insurance card it's, oh that guarantees their health care. Why do we spend, does anybody know how much we spend on the VA hospitals every year for the vets? How many billions of dollars? Well, we have hospitals down the street, clinics down the street. $160 billion we spend, as everybody knows. When we could easily integrate the VA folks to other hospitals, that would save maybe $80 billion for the best to get them better or more consistent care and maybe more preferential treatment. Put the best to the front of the line of all waiting lists, incumbency thinking or diversity thinking. And why is a retirement package for United States Congress folks? Does anybody know how many years you have to serve in the United States Congress to get a retirement package? Two. Two years. Two terms. That's it, huh? Four. Four. I don't know. Five, five oh. years. Five years you get a retirement package. How about that? Wow. Uh, huh? Five <laughs> years. <laughs> what that means is all senators get an automatic retirement package. Uh, also, I'd like to take, I like everyone, when you have a chance, in between your tweets and Facebook, to check out votesmart.org. What this thing says is how every politician is voted and who's funding them, who contributes, and who and how they voted. Very exciting uh, website, votesmart.org. Votesmart.org. <laughs> Yes, what's for All right, Gene. Gene did a presentation on campaign financing. We need another presentation. Gene, will you and your group get on the books and do the presentation again? Uh, we might. Just so you know, Gene did that presentation. It's on our, it's on our website. The College of Complex is 28 February 2015. I want to, I'm coming down to a line, coming down to close right here. I want to use a phrase for Congress and Illinois legislators. Don't pout, get out. To describe the gridlock. Get we out. sent the politicians to get the job done, not fold your arms and pout and do nothing. They must resolve the issues and move forward. If they want to pout, they need to get out. Get out. If you can't accomplish a job, give up the seat and let the next candidate take over. One more minute. Do we want our government representative results to remain the same, to get worse? Or do we want our government representative results to improve by voting out the incumbent and demanding candidates be held to their 30 campaign promises? Thank you for taking your time to explore some diversity. That's it. Questions. Oh, yeah, questions. Okay, I got a question. Brom? All right. Brom. 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 Brom.
Okay, here's some more. Don't worry. All right. Don't want to take a Are you ready? Come on. Come on. No, 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 no more paper. All right. Give them to someone else. Jeff Bush just put the paper. Ready? Smart man. Smart man. Really? Smart man. I know. All right, now. Are we taking questions? Let's get questions. Hey, hey. All right, we'll start off. Leave it off, leave it off. All right, Don Ritchie. Okay, um, Jeff, there are some people who, um, on late night talk shows, and they ask Americans, like, who's the Supreme Court justice? Um, who is your senator? Uh, you know, they name, people don't know the name of chief of staff, any of that. You're asking the average citizen to get involved and to vote line item and to be that participatory in, um, <laughs> in, in government? Uh, great question, great question. Yes, yes. It's very important to us. We want our social services. We want our schools. We want our mental health. We want our poor people. We want everybody taken care of. Do you think the average... If we care, we will get involved. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think the average... Chicago knows who their state senator and their state rep is? They should. If they don't know, they can call me. They, I, I can help them out. But have they, the question is more a question about effort. Did they take the time? Do they give a brass behind to, 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 to be that involved? I, I can't force anybody to do anything. Is that, is that what you're, you're saying? I'm just exposing them. I don't understand the question. Am I, am I answering your question or not? Well, well, say, 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 re justify your, question. your expectation. Just justify your expectation. Knowing how much the average person really does get involved or have knowledge about politics, justify your expectation that, that we're going to meet on this Tuesday. <coughs> Fantastic question. Fantastic question. Here, here we go. And here, here's the answer, Karina. I just gave you my presentation. Oh, no. Something called 90, uh, uh, the 90 day campaign, Telling Tuesdays. So, yes, I, I expect everybody to get involved in the Telling Tuesday. First week debates, second week, 30 minute uh, uh, question time. Fourth week are the questions of the residents to the candidates. Fourth week is informal gathering. Yes. And also, yes, I, I expect them to get involved. Yes, no problem. Okay. Um, uh, there's something I don't understand, Steve. I mean, are you, something you said earlier, are you advocating that the Veterans Administration system be replaced with private insurance for the veterans? No, sir. And what are you advocating? What I'm advocating is give the vets that are coming home that, that need care, give them insurance <coughs> to go anywhere they want in America. Oh, you mean so that, they, what That's do you mean insurance that. card? You mean, you mean so they can, uh, you mean so that they can get, uh, oh, I see, the government provided health insurance. Yes, sir. Okay, so not, are you, are you a veteran yourself? Buddy? Yes, sir, are you? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay, but, but, so you're talking about government provided health and you so it's yes, insurance provided by the government yes sir right. next okay. question okay. next question okay okay yes <laughs> one out of time Tim Bolger. all right Sorry. you know i i have as an expanded corollary to karina's question there would probably be more avid interest in the so and the cubs winning the world series than in the Chicago budget negotiations. I understand. How do you get, I understand that people need to get involved, but generally they're not, and that's kind of why we got the government we got. What do you think, besides the 90-day campaign, what we can do to get our government more and more people more involved in the democratic process? Well, it's up to you if you care or not. I, I can't force anybody to care, sir. Is that, is that what you're asking me? I mean, is there anything you, you advocate to get people to care? <laughs> it's up to them. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. If you want to answer that question, go ahead. His question? Oh, oh I thought you were trying to answer his question. No. Well, if you don't know, okay. that, that, that's, that, that's fair. I mean... Uh, that's fair. Let, 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 re, re, ask it a different way and maybe I can... No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. You, you, you basically have told me that you involve it's an individual's choice whether to get involved in our democratic yeah, process. I, I think it comes down to you got to really care about, about about people. I mean, if you care about everybody in this room, let's say the federal, federal for instance, you, you got to care about people because if we don't care, you're going to have our politicians cutting Medicare. You're going to have our politicians cutting Social Security. So if you don't care, 
You don't care about people. You don't care about your mother, your father, your grandfather, about Social Security. Okay. So, so I think it, it comes down to it from the heart. You care about people. Oh, change. All right. I think Hillary's starting to beat. Bill Webb. How much of all the federal or, or local and state spending is federally funded? How much local and state spending is federally funded? Federally funded. I don't know, sir. It's probably on the, the, on the budget in there somewhere. I, I'm not sure, but I'm with you on that. It, it, it's, it's a shame that we have that. It's a shame that we yeah, have that. Yeah, you spread the cost all over the whole country. But it's only a local district or state that gets the benefit. Yeah, so what's wrong again? A lot of education. I, I really think each state should, should be able to pay for their own goods and items. That'd be the better way. Why? So we don't have to rely on being held hostage by the federal government. That's why. Because why. if you want the program, you got to be able to pay for the program and not be held hostage and be told by the federal government. The Constitution, just so everybody knows, the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, if the powers are not in the Constitution, everything reverts to the states. That's why. It's all about the states. The poor state will educate their kids. All right, Charlie. I would like to know why this the federal government is not capable of governing the United States. I, I what say makes that. you I, think? They have a I'd like to know automatically why it makes states better or more efficient. At administering government. Well, first of all, as a matter of fact, you've got some, let me finish, you've got some real strange, stupid states out there. South Carolina, Georgia. These are not. Illinois? There's nothing. No. <laughs> Illinois is, is. You want Alabama to take care of You have not established in my mind Illinois is not well governed. You have not. But why not see why don't, what, on, what's this automatic federalism is is better? I've heard this from right, you and I don't understand at the federal, state, and local level why. As a matter of fact, you've got the observance of the entire nation. You've got professionals in in agencies as opposed to this local parochialism. Mm. The argument is just the opposite. We're a nation of 50 states. 50 states. And each individual state should take care of their own. That's why. why. The federal consti this Constitution says so. That's why. Tenth Amendment and the Ninth. Forget about the Constitution. All right, next question. Come on. All right, you got remarks for bundles coming. Did you change? Uh, Lehman, go ahead. Yeah. I have a two-part question. Oh, you better hurry up, man. Come on. We got the rebuttals coming. Okay. Rebuttals are going to start at 8. Or First so of all, you know, uh, Illinois has one of the lowest state taxes. Hell yeah, dime, okay? And, uh, Sorry. so, in the media... Not yet, yeah, it's going to jump to 5%, just so you know that. It's going to jump to 5%. Go ahead. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So, why does um, the media, which is pretty stupid, pretty nationally and everywhere, why do they say Illinois is in such bad shape? What's the real reason? Is it just strictly the pension issue? No. Sir, sir, we're about $100 billion in debt. For just the pensions? Yeah, and a $5 billion deficit right now. $5 billion deficit? $5 billion. Yes. With a B. A hundred billion with a B. We're going to fund 39% of, 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 of what was supposed to be funded. So why don't they just raise the rates for the... Um, Everybody. That's right. So who raise said the rates right? for a state worker? Everybody. Yes, we must all pay. The real price of an Illinois citizen is about 20% sales tax, three times what our property tax are paying now, three times... Uh, uh, we, we can't afford it unless we... And get everybody cough up their fair share. Like you're California absolutely right, Mr. Lehman. Absolutely right. California has 13 percent tax. You're absolutely right. We, we only have three percent tax. You're absolutely right. It's about to go to five, though. Just so yeah. You know. Okay. Here's my second part. Hurry up. Hurry up. What's, your, what, what's your degree and in what office do you want to run for? What's your dream office? Are you going to back me, sir? Yes. 
Okay. Did you know the numbers better than anybody in the state? Background is accounting. I got the accounting degree at Northeastern Illinois University. In accounting? In accounting. I love accounting. And what are you going to run for? I love numbers. Give me numbers. What office are you going to run for? You tell me right there. I can win. Well, we can win. Whatever there's an open office. <coughs> All right. We'll do it. We'll do it. Water reclamation. Shut boys. Uh, no, no, no. Something else. All right. All right, come on, that's it, right? Come on. Okay, come on. One, one more question. Come on, hurry up. All right, what do you think about Rauner? What do I think about Rauner? He's yeah. a new governor. He's got a new everybody here. Okay. And? And, so what do you think about him? What do you well, think he's about doing, first of all, he's doing constitutionally what he's required to do. Does everybody know that? I'm going to tell you what, the, what that requirement is. First of all, every September, the governor must talk to the agencies, state agencies, and tell the, the, the agencies what he plans to do with his budget and how, what, he, what he wants the agencies to uh, feed back to him. And then in October and November, those agencies then give their budget proposals. And then in Dece November and December, the agency agencies have uh, public hearings. And Ron has been doing all this. He's been doing this all along. And then in, in May, in February, the governor then submits his uh, uh, budget to the legislation. And then we have public hearings, and then in May, the legislation puts forth their uh, budget to the, to the governor, and the governor got the, got the budget, and he vetoed it on June 25th. And for what right. reason? Well, first of all, it was unconstitutional by Madigan. You must be in balance when you submit from the legislation to the governor. He was $4 billion on a whack. That's the reason he vetoed it. Go ahead. Simple here in the news lately, he's not lying, uh, beetle, lying beetle. Lying idle. Lying idle. He's supposed to be doing that instead of just projecting the whole. The whole thing. Forty-four states have that have that uh, um, authority. Authority, right? Forty-four we states. We oh, no, we do, we do. Illinois is one of them. A lot of people can play. He should be doing that instead of just. He has them. tried. Can, yeah, yeah. Okay, come on. We got, we got, come on, we got remarks, rebuttals. All right, I, let's I go to rebuttals. This will be exciting. Yeah, oh, now you, uh -oh. you if I, come on. Come on, Charlie. Let's if go. I run for office and I get reelected, I get the signatures from a nice campaign, get reelected, according to your proposal that you're advancing, the day after I'm sworn in, my opponents, who I defeated, can go out and circulate petitions, 15%, you said, and hold a recall election. What yes, position? No, what position? No, what I, position? What position are you? Doesn't matter. You the said the that you Only are, the governor has you a are recall. advocating recall, and you now that yes. I don't know I'm what this try. why is achieved by this. I have done. I haven't even been in office yet, and they're collecting <laughs> signatures to get me thrown out, and that's your proposal. How about we but collect signatures? No, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool, sir. It's a tool. You're not performing your job as a tool. According to the way it's written, you can do it the day after All the right, person. Charlie. How do we recall the Charlie from today? While they're taking the oath. Okay, okay, it's a tool though. But go ahead. It's That's a it, tool. Right? Come on, remarks. Remarks. That's a good yeah. tool. Yeah, All right. Charlie, we're recalling you from questions. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, let's go to rebuttals. Let's go to rebuttals. Here's Let's thank Steve for. Now you're out. We're going to your bottle. All right, guys. Okay. All right. How many? Now, how many people here have rebuttals? One, two, three, four. Okay. How many, Brown? With Let's go four minutes. Four minutes, okay. Uh, beginning with you, uh, Gene. Um, thanks, Steve. It's, uh, your, your presentation was, to me, overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of reeling. So I'll be as specific and short as possible. For one thing, we all, all ought to look at our voter card. On our voter card, it will tell you numbers, and if you call a the, the in the Chicago uh, Commission on Voting, they will tell you the name of your state rep, your, your state yeah. senator, your alderman, 
your county commissioner and your U.S. rep. It's all on here in numbers, and there are one or two other numbers. If you're seriously in, interested in getting involved, I suggest you do what I do, and that is to go to Jane Adams Senior Caucus. Uh, on Wednesday, I was in the uh, city council chambers and had a uh, press conference. And my alderman came over and shook hands with me. It wasn't because I was Gene Horker, believe me. It was because he knew I was from Jane Adam Senior Caucus. So I was there for a couple hours and others were there. And at the same time, a bunch were going to Springfield to hear Governor Rauner's presentation. So if you really want to get involved, come to Jane Adams Senior Caucus. We've been talking about stuff like scrap the cap on Social Security for years. So Monday, 1 o'clock at 1111 North Wells, the Health and Economic Justice uh, Committee. You don't have to be a member. Come on, get in Bob. Thank you. This might be a little like to watch it. We're trying to kind of take us seeming disorganized, but I hope I can remember everything. I, I think it's a pretty good argument for some other process to deal with these problems than the political process. Now, I've been thinking for some years that we're going to go to invoke the economic process, but to do that, you kind of have to know what a free market is, and I don't find too many people that know that. But with the end, you invoke the economic process. Well, let's look at it this way. Military strategy is 90% logistics. Tori Norquist was kind of the choice of saying that he wanted to shrink the government to the size they could draw in a bathtub. Well, I a free marketeer. He's uh, well, uh, great you that you need a government personal property rights to enforce contracts. But I'd, I'd like to see the economic process run like a, a, a free market, like a free election. Now, uh, what you pay for is what you want, and not inflated or taxed away with all kinds of superfluous costs. You know, I think I speak of what I think he proved tonight is what Mises said, socialism is impossible because you just can't know enough that has to be taken care of in the market. I, I just briefly glanced at some of these handouts he was passing around. Did I get anything out of it? No. I just took, took a quick look at it and passed it on. Can't deal with all this information, at least not on an explicit level. You have to do it implicitly through a market process. And you run the market like you, a free market uh, is free like a free election. The results, uh, the results are what the people really want. I don't think you have to have all that information again. You'll be overwhelmed after a while. And you, 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 you'll see, you'll see, you'll see a tree, but you don't see the woods. And that, that's the problem with that. If you look at the last election where we had a president, what happened? Obama comes in and he says, hope and change. What does that mean? It can mean anything. If you listen to Dennis Kucinich, 
He was saying quite the same thing as Bernie Sanders. And right away they said, well, he's not electable. He doesn't have no stature. He's not, uh, he doesn't have no charisma, so forth and so on. One has to look at one's program. And Bernie Sanders has a program. That's why a lot of people are interested in what he's saying. That's why uh, th this particular time in history where the economy is going down yeah, real bad <laughs> and somebody brought up global you know warming that's increasing at a very uh, fast rate, we know that the whole civilization that we have, what we call capitalism, is falling apart. It's not viable. And if we don't do something about it, we're not going to have a planet to live on, and nobody's going to be able to eat after a while. It's a very, very serious problem that's going on, and something you don't just get from a few papers passing around. So the whole particular system has to be changed. Now, they came out recently, 62 people own half the wealth of the planet. That is insane when you have something like that. We have a top-heavy society, and something that is top-heavy is going to fall after a while. It can't stand. When it's going to happen, nobody knows. I listen to Tom Hartman sometimes, and he says the year, this year, 2016, we're going to have a downfall of the economy. I don't know if we will or we won't have. That's something nobody really forecasts because there's so many different aspects to reality, you can't actually make uh, an estimate like that. But we do know that something doesn't happen soon, maybe within 10 or 15 years, we're going to have a point of no return. I listen to This Is Hell, and there's a climate scientist on there, and he said we already passed that point. Whether or not we did or not, I don't know. We have, we have to ask the leading climatologist to make an estimate. We don't know that's going to happen. But we do know if something doesn't happen that is very radical and very deep-seated as far as changing this system, we're not going to have no life on Earth. We'll be like Mars. Oh, all right, all right. Thank you, sir. Okay, Andy. <laughs> okay, Andy. Um, Tim, can you turn your computer? Yes. For the, watch the clock. Yes. How's that? Better? Yeah. That's great. Um, we have a lot of numbers. One of the problem when you're dealing with a lot of numbers. You can get buried in the numbers, like you say, uh, you, you can't see the forest you know, because of the trees or vice versa. Uh, I call it standing in a blizzard and you can't see a single snowflake. Um, <laughs> we teach seventh graders universal advice. In order to solve any problem, you have to first correctly identify the problem and then correctly identify the solution. If you're not going to use language in proper language and properly identify problems, then you're just uh, spinning wheels and putting out tons of rhetoric, and that's what we're getting year after year after year from our politicians. Uh, you know, language matters. And tonight, uh, I, I thought we were going to talk about diversity versus incumbency, but that was the one single issue that didn't seem to be covered in tonight's talk. Uh, so I'll make a few comments really quick here. If, if you throw everybody out, incumbents, every election, then nobody stays in there long enough to develop the expertise, to uh, contacts and everything, to actually make anything work. Also, if, you, if you're, people that are, know they're going to be voted out or thrown out after one term, what kind of people from society are going to apply for that job or run for office? How many people are independently wealthy enough that they can take six years out of their life to uh, occupy a political spot and then go back yeah. with no pension, no means of uh, business because their business is gone or their job's gone, everything else. Um, 
The issue is not covered tonight. One of them is money in politics, the enormous money from the Koch brothers and everyone else, the billionaires. They own and operate our political system in the United States. They own and operate the, mil uh, the media. Quick show of hands, how many people have read any one of these books over the last 10 years from Censored News? Two hands. This is uh, Project Censored Handbook comes out every year <coughs> with the top 25 stories and I've been uh, bringing copies in here since 2007. How many have read Christina Borgeson's book Into the Buzzsaw? Uh -huh. Anybody here? Published in 2004. Christina Borgeson put together a book like this. 18 Pulitzer Prize winners who all got fired and blackballed one day for trying to report something that would matter to Americans. You get fired and blackballed in a heartbeat if you talk about certain issues, try to get issues out. That's why Michael Moore's movie is being buried by the media and the theater it's complex the right now. The theater um, industrial complex. Media control. If we, we would have plenty of money for all the programs that are starving right now, the pension fund, all kinds of things. There's plenty of money in America if we look at where the money is. It's in the bank accounts of uh, some filthy rich billionaires who have been on the greatest welfare gravy train for the last 40 years. We are running a welfare for billionaires program in America and shoveling money into these bank accounts in numbers that haven't been seen since the pharaohs walked the earth. Our Congress, collectively, because of the Citizens United <clears throat> disgraceful Supreme Court decision that says basically that billionaires can buy and sell politicians or rent them if the price is right, our Congress is the greatest, finest running, smoothest running intellectual whorehouse on the planet. <laughs> That's number one. If we don't deal with the money, then we're not going to be able to deal with any other issues because these people will say and do anything for a few million dollars in speaking fees. Last point, language matters again. We're calling these people governors in many states. We should be addressing them as criminals and felons. Many, many of our governors, the right-wing Republicans calling themselves governors, are involved in massive criminal activity. And other governors are actually criminals masquerading as governors like Rick Scott in Florida, man should be in jail. Rick Snyder in uh, Michigan, he should be just serving a prison term for the rest of his life for uh, poisoning you know, thousands and thousands of people in Michigan. We have massive criminal activity in our political system that is driven by the money. The, the, uh, the, the Supreme Court said that the billionaires can just buy and sell whatever politicians they want. Bernie is talking about that one issue, getting money out of politics. You start there, and also he saw the other thing he's saying, if people come out and show up in numbers, then Democrats can win. You can, you can elect somebody that's common sense if enough people know, but you have to help get the word out because the media are running blackouts on common sense. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Anybody wants the other information, come see me. Okay. Mr. Don Ritchie, when you're ready. All right. I, um, all right, well... This Time is very here, interesting. Um, very interesting presentation. It's an awful lot of, awful lot of information. Way more than than, than I don't know if anyone could read. I have all those handouts. I don't, way more than anyone could read in, in one sitting. Uh, certainly, the amount of time that you know for the lecture. Um, I would certainly agree with with you, Steve, about um, about democracy. I'm all for democracy, and and I'm in favor of more citizen participation in the political process. I think. I think anyone who believes in democracy would uh, would have to agree with that. Uh, however, there are some. Um, there, there, I would have to disagree with the the idea that that voting that simply voting out incumbents will solve all our problems. Um, first of all, I don't see this. In plague of incumbency as being perhaps as much of a problem as, as, as Steve is, is describing it as. Um, and we, we don't keep voting the same people in over and over again. Um, if you consider over the last 10 years, uh, let's consider the U.S. Congress. U.S. Congress went from having a Republican majority in 2006 to having a Democratic majority. Uh, and, then, uh, and then in the year 2010, four years later, 
um, it, it flipped, and the uh, and the Republicans got a majority first in the House of Representatives, and now. Uh, since 2014, they also have a majority in the Senate. So obviously, there was enough people, uh, you know, there was enough people who didn't like their congressman or didn't like the, the people in power to, uh, to change it. Now, the same thing has happened here in our home state of Illinois. Pat Quinn was running for re-election. He lost to Bruce Rauner. Whether you agree, whether you like Quinn better or Bruce Rauner better is not really my point here. My point is that the people had the power to decide, you know what, I don't like that guy that's in power, and let's try this guy out. And that's what happened. And uh, so, now, I would also strongly disagree with your, with, with your rhetorical question about the AARP. Well, you, it was just a rhetorical question, but you said, what has the AARP ever done to protect Social Security? Well, I will tell you, in the year 2005, uh, the AARP camp, uh, campaigned and, and was successfully able to stop uh, President George W. Bush from privatizing Social Security, which he tried to get done that year. So uh, that, was, that was one significant accomplishment of the AARP that I know of. Uh, again, whether you agree that the privatization of Social Security is a bad idea, or whether you're in favor of that sort of thing, of having, you know, in other words, putting, putting let's see, the retirees' money into the stock market and seeing how that goes, um, that, that's not really what I'm, what I'm getting at here. But my point is that the AARP has accomplished things. And whether, you know. Now, um, all right, well, at that point, I see that I'm only on three minutes, but I really have nothing else to say, so I will let uh, uh, Li, Li Ping here uh, uh, go. Thank you. All right. Oh, Hi, Hi, hey, good evening. All right. Thank you for the talk. Uh, it's uh, a lot of stuff uh, let me learn and uh, then have a, a, a rough feeling about the current. Uh, uh, election system or political system. I think I, I'm uh, proposing a solution today. Uh, whether it's good or bad, I uh, hope you can uh, make a judgment. The problem I see for electing uh, representatives, uh, right now the system is, uh, is not working. Everybody is, uh, has very low uh, satisfaction on that. And uh, the problem is uh, people, to a certain extent, people just don't want to vote. Okay, they think uh, when I go to vote, usually only two camps, Republican or Democrat. If I don't like them, what can I do? Not voting. Uh, sometimes uh, maybe I'm lucky, one of the camp I, that's what I preferred, so I elected. But uh, he lost the, the, the election, and uh, still, my voice is not there, disappeared. Uh, if I'm uh, very, very lucky, my, my like the candidate uh, got elected, so he goes to Springfield or Washington, D.C., and then he's surrounded by the, all the lobbyists, all the big money, all the party lines, and uh, my, my voice is lost again. So people are just not interested in voting for representative. Maybe they are more interested in voting for uh, president. So when there's uh, every four years uh, when the president got elected and the, the voter turnout is higher. How to correct this problem? I'm thinking high technology, not so high uh, right now, just uh, some technology may help. The problems begins with, say, I got uh, highly, uh, lots of people elected me to, to be representative. I go to Springfield, and uh, compared to another person got elected, uh, it's, uh, he got uh, just a few uh, votes, or, or maybe only half of the vote, votes of mine, but when we vote on a bill, I have only one vote. He got only one vote. and. Uh, it's not fair. So if I got, uh, I, I'm representing more people, I should have more vote than the other person. If I vote by less people, then I, I shouldn't have uh, the same equivalent of voting power on the bill. Uh, that's one thing. Why? Because uh, 12, 200, 300 years ago, there's no calculator. Okay? so. When you count the vote, you only count how many heads. Now there are calculators, so when 
the in the big company when the uh, uh, stockholder voting on issues, they vote not by counting heads. They vote by counting how much uh, stock you have in your pocket. And uh, we need such system to make everybody's voice count correctly. Okay, if you say, uh, my candidate lost, uh, what, what can I do? Okay, now the internet is very prevalent. Okay, you may be able, if I got a uh, highly high vote elected, then I go to Springfield or DC, have an office and uh, work there. But uh, if I only got a few votes, I can still stay at home and uh, use the internet and uh, watch what the issues is and uh, discuss with them through the internet and also vote through the internet with only a few votes uh, which, which represent my, my uh, uh, during the election, how many people <laughs> vote me. So in such system, everybody's vote counts, okay? If you don't really like the system, you can be your representative, okay? So everybody should be very happy with this system and it should be an easy system. And uh, so uh, that's what I'm proposing. Another few uh, advantages. Oh, okay, I saw this uh, five minutes. No, it's four. Oh, okay, uh, 10 seconds. No gerrymandering, okay? In that case, no absolute, no because it count the votes. It less partisan, less special interest group, less big money and the lobbyist effect, and the less election financial issues because uh, uh, everybody will be elected just in terms of how many votes you got. Please think about it. You. The problem with Steve Kunjus' campaign is he doesn't have suitable slogans or even a campaign song for it. I, I specifically remember something even better than a tax man. This was something done on the Rush Limbaugh show in 1993, and I think it would be much appropriate to Steve's campaign. You close your eyes, I was elected. Guess what, you're not protected. And now all my schemes have come true. Hey, I need to invest, so send over your check. Cause I'm taxing your money from you. All your money I will tax from you. All your money, I need revenue. Hey, we'll all be on welfare, but hey, now we'll have health care. I'll show you what government can do. And oh, by the way, you'll walk home every day, because I'm taxing that gasoline too. All your money, I will tax from you. Come on, guys. You know you were being reported. All right, let's thank our speaker. You certainly. Uh, on that and um, thank you for your uh, gifts and uh, prizes here. Nice little treat here. I'll be eclectic as usual. I guess the topic was incumbency versus diversity and uh, immediately comes to mind is that old movie Mr. Smith Goes to Washington <laughs> in which you have someone totally apolitical who finds himself in the United States Congress and basically is lost. And I don't know why you're advocating that we send people to Washington who might be similarly lost 
and expect that out of that is going to come good government. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, our lives have gotten a bit more complex than they were centuries ago, and with that complexity takes uh, people who can handle that complexity increasingly. It's getting increasingly complex. There's increasingly more difficult issues uh, that require a higher degree of expertise. Now, to say that we're just going to send someone who has no experience at all in government was not the reason why they established formal civil service. And they found that the best government was administered if you had a stable workforce, who was apart from politics, as a matter of fact, and had certain, uh, was not subject to recall. Just the opposite. So I don't know why it would work. Um, far from eliminating, reducing campaign, I think anybody who runs for political office for less than, let's say, four years is kind of a waste of time. Uh, it takes some degree of understanding for the operations of government at its highest level, and I think it only takes that long to even know the, the lay of the land. Uh, i reminded of the thing about experience in individuals in government the one area that I'm dealing with, I'll tell you a little story. I dealt with Congressman Jim Oberstar of Minnesota. And he was in charge of transportation, specifically railroads. You know, I'm kind of into this. But I was at a conference, and he got up and gave a speech at least for an hour, an hour and a half, without any notes. And he brought us up to date on the current state of the railroads in the United States and the world. And I was impressed with his knowledge and expertise. And according to your plan, we wouldn't have that knowledge or expertise. That's, that's not the way we want to go. Now, some of these things are just nonsensical, largely what the work of government does at the three levels. And you gave us a bunch of examples, but they have to deal with appropriations. It's not exciting things to do. Matter of fact, it's probably the least exciting. It's not what we think fun government is. There's big topical issues on the evening news. No, about 80, 75% of it is boring appropriation measures, making these decisions, and stuff like that. Um, to think that the public is going to do this is, is just not going to happen. They're just not going to, it takes them self-discipline to sit down. Even I just don't want to have any interest in it and force myself to read some of this stuff, what they go through. It's not, a lot of government isn't very exciting, right? You know, it really isn't. Uh, the last thing is, um, the, there's some arbitrary and, and capricious decisions you've made that taxes are too high or too low. And I, I don't know if there's such a standard. Where did that come from? And you, you seem to think that the cheapest government is the best government. Well, I don't think so. I think the best government we have is the government that we need at that time. But it's like you're saying, well, let's say this nation was attacked and we had to go to war, uh, therefore we shouldn't spend money on self-defense because we have to maintain cheap government. No, you go with the government that you need at that time and what you think the people need. Matter of fact, I think the most expensive government, being a socialist, some would say, is in fact the best government. Why? Because where are we getting that money from? Those who can most afford it. And we are assisting those who can least afford it. And that, to me, is the function of government. And that means an expensive government by some but that's just too too bad. You know, I'm sorry. That's what government does under my definition. So 
Why, why should we have the cheapest government if it's only to benefit, let's say, the rich? Okay. That's ridiculous. That's not sensical. Why would we want that? All right, Charlie, you're out of time. Anyhow, all right. That's a rich here. All right, all right. Dave Zucker. I still want to know how David Trump, thinks, Donald Trump thinks he knows foreign affairs. <laughs> he doesn't. Well, he doesn't have to. I agree with he most does some of the business overseas. <laughs> I agree with the comments that have been made. Yeah. You know, why should we kick somebody out just because they have just the, the experience and the knowledge? I would also add here that you also spoke about sending young people abroad to, instead of foreign aid, to, to uh, carry on various foreign aid projects. Well, we've been doing that for over 50 years. It's called the Peace Corps. I'm old enough to remember when President Kennedy first proposed it. That's number one. Second, second um, instead of voting out all incumbents all the time, I'm in favor of voting out all the Republicans. Thank you. <laughs> These um, government pensions are taxed, right? The personal income tax? Sure. Yeah. Yeah? What do you think, my, You don't know? <laughs> my pension is tax free? Anyway, um, I just get the feeling that um, these politicians get to stay forever because a seat becomes open because of a death or retirement or what happens and whatever, and then somebody gets elected and they're in that seat and they get so powerful and well known it's just hard to get somebody elected out you know once they're in you know once you get in you're you're like a supreme court justice until you die <clears throat> anyway uh, a couple other things i wanted to note here um all these super donors i just kind of made it around here how uh, uh, renaissance technologies donating $14 million, their PAC, another hedge fund, $13 million, another hedge fund, $10 million, another hedge fund, stock brokers, $10 all these, why are these people donating so much money? Is it because they have it? I'm sure that's one reason, and, you know, what are they? Yeah, and uh, they're trying to uh, get us to not uh, tax Wall Street. Uh... A couple things on Illinois. Uh, you know, you, we hear from the stupid media in this state, in this city, in this country, that Illinois is so bad, and we have one of the lowest um, state income taxes. Um, so I'm really not sure what the big problem is, except for the pensions, the, the state pensions that they, they took money from. Well, if, if we're going to have a terrific uh, pension plan for teachers and and public sorry, servants, yeah. and, and uh, they should be putting more money into the pension. You know, it's that simple. Too late now. Well, no, and it's never too late. You're gonna, you, you know, you're you got to pay more into. Uh, you know, you got to pay more into your pension. You know, not me. I'm not a state worker, so I don't know what the big problem is with the state. A couple billion dollars deficit. Uh, that's nothing these days. So. Um, Cost more to borrow money if you have a bad rating. Yeah, that's another scam. Borrowing all this, you know, there was another yeah, chart here. How much money we spend on uh, interest on debt? That's that'd be interesting to know. So what are you gonna put the pensioners on the street? Like no, but you just gotta put more. You know, if you're they're pulling in a hundred hundred thousand dollars a year, fifty thousand dollars a year, they're gonna have to pay more into their pensions. The workers. Well, it's, uh, it's not a savings account. Sure it is. It's just like a, it's just like social security for the rest of us. You don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do. It's not a savings account. Yeah, it's pension is for retirement. So um, the, uh, my only, in my, I only think that people leave Illinois is when the weather gets bad. It's been a nice winter. So I think more people are going to stick around now. Um, but whenever we have some bad winters, like we had the last couple of years, uh, then people leave. So I don't think it's a, you know, 
I don't think it's a function of uh, our state finances. So Steve, uh, yeah, I hope you uh, kick off your campaign and run for something for the state or the city. I'll, I'll back you. You know these numbers better than anybody else in our state or our city. <laughs> so good job. And that's about it. Okay. Okay, Brom. Four minutes. Four minutes, Brom. Yes, I, I too was uh, uh, <laughs> backing the uh, the, the uh, proposal to. Uh, well, it was called Keeping the Promise, um, and, and it was uh, for the, the CHA, and the, the city, uh, there was a hearing in, in the uh, city council chamber, and the aldermen were sitting there, but, and there were these stacks of papers that were brought to them uh, by uh, the a librarian of the city council and so on. And, uh, you know, and, you know, if you want to know the ins and outs of any legislation and, and uh, the uh, 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 what's his name? Jones. James Jones uh, of HUD was there. Uh, and uh, he was answering questions uh, from uh, the, the, the city council and uh, interested parties. Uh, and it was informative. But, uh, and, and the, the was, legislation was reviewed by uh, people who opposed the legislation and as well as those who were contending for it. Uh, so you learned a little about it, and I wound up thinking, well, my goodness, parts of the legislation uh, seem to be undermining uh, the, uh, the goals of the legislation uh, that was proposed. So uh, I <laughs> came away a little discouraged, <laughs> though I've spent the, the bulk of the day, the, protesting for it uh, and demonstrating for it uh, and uh, that was but it's not all lost because when you demonstrate for the end of the legislation and the end of the legislation is something that even its opponents uh, will uh, acknowledge is worth while uh, at least you, you're you're showing that you care for, for something that's important enough to uh, command a little uh, respect from your legislators. Um, next time uh, legislation is offered uh, on the subject of, of, you know, the, the CHA does not uh, reinvest the monies that it gets uh, very rapidly and doesn't do, has not built uh, uh, a, what is it, 101 units of housing that it uh, uh, 101 okay yeah that, that it's much more than 101 of uh, then what was it Gene how many units of housing have to be built uh, I think it's more like like uh, thousands so uh, of units, and the real okay. estate lobby is very effective and well represented. Um, my goodness, the time is elapsing that fast. All right. Uh, at any rate, the particulars on legislation and so on. Not everybody is going to be informed on. 
even uh, particularly the people who are affected by it. Okay. So you, 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 you need people in place who know the questions and the, uh, the aldermen are okay. the elected representatives that people go to. So they do a job and they, they need, uh, if they're not re-elected, okay. uh, they uh, are going to All right. <laughs> All right. be out on their ear Brown. with or without a pension. All uh, right. Take care of you. All right. Thank Steve, you, you get the final word. All right. Final word. Keep it brief. We got it. We're running, kind of running low on time. No. Come on. Somebody else. No, we, we got to wrap it up at quarter till. You giving pressure there, brother? You giving pressure? Huh? Are you giving pressure? We're, we just got to keep moving. All right. Hey, I want to thank everybody for your questions. Your remarks and rebuttals, and your attentive ear during the presentation. Very exciting stuff to allow this kind of environment to uh, uh, enjoy itself. Especially now. Especially now. <laughs> all right, I want to thank you all for your questions, remarks, rebuttals. I ask that each and every one of you talk to all of your friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, religious organization folks, your social organizations, coffee clutches to look for this presentation on YouTube and share it with as many people as possible. Yeah, good, bad, or ugly, baby. Share it, share it, debate it. The reason I'm asking you for your help on this is to start the conversation by answering the question of, if diversity is so revered in our society, why is it that we keep, uh, keep on voting the same folks in again, again, and again, that have the same skill set or lack of and expect different results, which we all know is a definition of insanity. And keep me and others in mind to help implement the list of the top 30 items to be accomplished by all candidates during their tenure to elected office. Please tweet out this message, Facebook this message, Snapchat, email, voicemail, etc., etc. There is no need to get out of your slippers and into the streets to get rid of incumbency. Please use the internet as the great tool that it could and should be. Just convince everyone in your sphere of influence that incumbency is a cancer for our great ward, city, county, state, and country. Ask the folks in your sphere of influence to get rid of incumbency. Thank you. All right, Brom, gamble us out. Gamble us out, Brom. Dismiss us, Brom. Dismiss Go home. We got something to come back soon when you can.